Yeah, let's uh, yeah let's start of course with uh, Stigmata Itch is coming out in the beginning of uh, December. So firstly, uh, did the pandemic affect the making of this album? How was the writing process, the recording? How was it this time around? Um, it certainly made things difficult, uh, but I guess it's the same thing for everyone. Um, however, this album was actually written back in 2019 um during that year um so it didn't really affect the composition um the composition period um but it did however affect the recording of the album a little bit more um because when we uh when we got the sister superior our new vocalist on the train uh we had to record her vocals and we were supposed to do that at fashionation street studios a legendary metal studio in sweden um but the corona virus hit us simultaneously which made it really difficult to arrange because train rides were cancelled all over sweden i mean nobody knew nothing um so it was a very chaotic period but i mean we did our best we tried our hardest and um the album turned out quite amazing if you ask me um and she was she was really persistent you know none of us really gave up um and one other funny thing is that the intro on the album, uh, which is called Oh the Joy, which differs quite a lot from the original RTR sound, was originally supposed to be recorded at a local church uh, with a seven piece choir and an acoustic guitar. But of course, due to the uh, coronavirus and the pandemic lockdowns and all that, I had to record every single member one by one in my studio. <laughs> and I mean, it turned out pretty great. But I mean, I had to um, I had to work with quite a lot of channels, and I mean, when when the social thing isn't really there, when you can't synchronize to other people, I have to make them synchronize in post production in Cubase. So it was quite a lot of work, but um, it it turned out pretty great, and we had a good time doing it. Uh, as you said, uh, the material was written already last year uh, before all this. So uh, so what was the so uh, what were the sources of inspiration for you uh, this time? Yeah, this is this is pretty um, pretty interesting actually, um, because the album was written as I said during 2019, and um, since I'm the one who um, composes all the music and lyrics, um, I can say that the music and especially Stigmata Itch is almost like a diary for me. It's my catharsis. It's the way I cleanse my soul. And the, the album was originally about my life at that time. And I was going through a phase, sort of. Um, and I was going through sort of a minor crisis, to be honest with you, because I am transparent. It's okay. Um, and somehow, I, I realized afterwards, and you're not actually the first person to ask me this, whether or not Stigmat H was inspired by the coronavirus and the lockdown because of the uh, the whole theme of the album. So somehow it was like, I was composing an album about 2020 without even knowing it. So my personal crisis uh, sort of aesthetically and lyric wise synchronized with the pandemic, which, which were to come. So, um, I don't know if it was, I don't know if there's a meaning behind it. I don't know if there's a higher power c commanding me. I have no idea, but it turned out pretty great. Um, yeah, yeah. After you, uh, like you said, uh, there was some, uh, uh, some difficulties with the recording, of course. So uh, what are your thoughts uh, overall on the album now that it's, uh, I guess, basically done? Overall thoughts. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I can say that I really poured my heart and my soul into this album, and that's a rare feeling. And when I listen to the album now, I can say that, and this doesn't happen a lot, but there is not, not really anything that I would like to change. For the first time ever, I feel like this album is complete. This album is 100%. Um, and that's a pretty cool feeling. And I think that I mean, so far, the album hasn't, have, hasn't been released yet, but so far, when I've been talking to my PR agent, um, she says that generally the reception is amazing so far because it's something new. I mean, we, 
we do this industrial electro metal music, but we combine so many other elements with this kind of music, such like Eurodance and even ABBA pop style and symphonic elements as well. Uh, and not to mention the extremely weird intro of the joy. Um, so I think we attract a lot of people and it's because of the variety, I believe, because it's just one big, pure, colorful chaos, which is RTR. Yeah, um, you are clearly happy with the album, but how is it to put out uh, new music at a time like this? What kind of uh, experience is it? I think there's both pros and cons. Um, and honestly speaking, I mean, there's not much we can do about it, right? Um, but I think that since, since streaming nowadays in the year 2020 is so big, I think that's the, uh, the primary income for most artists nowadays is the streaming, um, at least for some artists. Uh, but of course, it's, it's really sad because usually you, you, you follow this, this like circle of life or circle of music where you, um, you begin by, you compose the album, you produce the album, you record the album, you release it, and afterwards, you, you, you perform the album, right? Um, and as it seems now, um, I don't know when we're actually are gonna be able to perform those songs. And that's kind of sad because part of the, um, part of like the communication between the audience and us as producers and musicians is to actually watch their reactions live to see how well does this work out? Is this something the fans want? Like, it's like the final test. And this time, um, there will be no final test, most likely. Because, I mean, I produce music all the time. And, I mean, I read that band. I think I read about that Monster Magnet just cancelled uh, gigs in March or April, I believe. And this time, they were just cancelled, not even postponed. Because it's, it's getting ridiculous now when people postpone dates for, like, the third or fourth time. Um, but, I mean, it is what it is, and there's nothing we can do about it. Maybe I will have another album finished by the year 2022, um, and then we'll have two albums to perform, so lots of new songs for you. Uh, one thing that caught my eye uh, was uh, the visual side of your promo pictures of uh, the upcoming album. To, for me, it uh, kind of brought my, to mind like uh, maybe a Nordic summer wedding or something like that. So how did you come up with these visuals? That's a good question. I mean, I think that I, I guess the answer which would be an answer which would make sense would be that we like to provoke and I'm and I'm pretty tired of the whole metal stereotypes I mean there there are so many bands out there and, I, and I'm okay with that I mean if, if they're cool with it it's their choice but I'm not the kind of guy who run a band with a couple of guys just standing there nothing happening like in a backyard with like Iron Maiden t-shirt and jeans like looking all manly and staring into the camera. It works really well for some artists and kudos to you, of course. But personally, I believe that music is art. It's a concept, right? And I think that we wanted to do something more. We wanted to do something special. And considering that, um, considering that we are, after all, Rave the Requiem and the Church of RTR, as we call it, I think that it makes sense for us to have such an aesthetic as well. Uh, there is definitely a very, uh, a very weird and, and spiritual side to what we're doing. So I think that that picture captures the madness. It captures the colorful chaos, the positivity of the music, which is, which I think it is. Yeah, I thought it was a very refreshing uh, kind of take. take. Uh, well, as we've been talking, the times are pretty uncertain, but is there some uh, like concrete plans that will happen after the album release? Is there going to be streaming gigs or? Uh... Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what we're planning on doing. Um, and if everything turns out the way it should, which it rarely does, but still, that's what we hope for. Uh, I think we will um, have a stream, have a stream gig um, probably around January or February. Um, depending on what's happening. We do have shows in the Ukraine, 
uh, a Minotaur booked for March. Um, but I mean, we try to stay neutral right now where we don't hope for it because we know that it might get canceled. We don't know what's happening. And, and I mean, the numbers of, of COVID-19 are they're on, on the rise again. So we don't know what's going to happen. But some streaming concert, um, definitely, that's going to happen. We're going to do... T- we're going to try to do something really special. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. What kind of uh, production are we looking at when you uh, plan these streaming gigs? Yeah, well, let's just say that there are two aspects, um, which like two choices, which every musician has to, has to choose between. Um, here's the practical side, where everything just works. And here's the, uh, the visual side. Like, it would be awesome to perform in Castle Ruins, for example. But it would be really, really smart to perform in a, like, traditional bigger studio. But that's kind of boring to look at. So we're going to try to get closer to the, uh, the aesthetic side and do things as, as awesome as possible. Um, because if we can't, I mean, what's the point of it all? I mean, people don't want to watch us just standing there in a the studio Wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt and perform. Nothing wrong with an Iron Maiden t-shirt, but it's not concert material, if you ask me. Um, So we're going to try to do something really special. And we do have some really cool environments around here in the southern parts of Sweden. Um, So um, I can't promise you anything right now, but maybe there are some historical places which we maybe can't perform at. So um, let's just keep it open for now and hope for the best. Okay, yeah, that sounds very interesting. Um, I've been talking with uh, a lot of bands and uh, I've been asking them like uh, how they think that all this pandemic, uh, how it will affect the music industry. You seem to have a kind of positive outlook on things. So from your point of view, uh, how, how will all this affect the industry? Well, you know what? I think mankind, mankind is like a cockroach. It survives anything. And I mean, we survived uh, the ancient plagues. We survived the Black Death of Europe in the 1300s. We survived two world wars. We survive anything because, I mean, mankind is adaptable. And I think that everything is going to become normal after a while. Maybe we can't travel like we used to. Maybe the whole concept of touring won't even be a thing anymore. I don't know. But I think that we will adapt to it. I think that we will adapt to it. I think that somehow mankind will adjust itself and so will the music industry. Because, I mean, streaming is already a pretty big part of, like, that's, for most artists, the primary income nowadays. Um, So I, I choose to look at it positively because, I mean things happen for a reason that's that's my strong belief and i think that there's not much we can do about this anyway so it's and that's and I, that also pretty much sums up the theme of the album stigmata itch we know that the end is coming and you have to prepare for it you're itching for your stigmata right you know that the end is coming and there's nothing you can do to change it so you better learn how to accept it and roll with it rather than fight it um, but I think we're going to get back to where we were, actually. I mean, the COVID-19 is, it is definitely a dangerous virus, but it's not even close to, uh, to the Black Death, for example. Uh, so I think that if we give, give this a couple of years, at least according to the scientists, um, at least according to what they say, um, I think that hopefully within a couple of years, we'll be back to where we were. However, many artists, I believe, um, will maybe have a hard time they will definitely struggle, and I don't know if everyone's going to survive financially, if you know what I mean. Bands who formerly used to live on their music and has it as their primary income maybe won't be able to anymore. So maybe they'll have to return to the state of music being a hobby. You know what I mean? So maybe that's going to affect the quality, but I hope not, because I really hope that so many people are frustrated. The crowd, the audience is frustrated. And the musicians are really frustrated as well. And there's so much bottled up energy, which will be unleashed someday. So um, take it for what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. So I definitely have a positive outlook. 
Okay, uh, yeah, let's uh, end with a po positive note then. Uh, what do you think like uh, <clears throat> when we finally do get back to, you know, doing concerts? So what, what kind of experiences will the first gigs be? Are you talking about gigs? Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Um, our gigs, I mean, that first time we're going to perform. Yeah. Well, um, as I said before, right, there is going to be um, a lot of bottled up energy for sure. Um, there's going to be a lot of hallelujah moments, I can tell you that. There's going to be a lot of energy on stage. And I mean, we're, I'd say that we're known because we've been told this many times. I mean, we're, we're a pretty energetic band on stage. And I mean, it, it's probably going to be an overload once we enter the stage. Uh, so maybe we'll just pass out after a couple of minutes, but it's going to be worth it anyway. Uh, we, we just can't wait to get out there back again. I truly hope that the tour in the Ukraine is going to happen in March. If it doesn't, I truly hope for the summer festivals, which were canceled, canceled this year. Um, so whatever happens, we're going to enter the stage and we're going to be stronger than ever. And I truly hope that every artist out there feels that way. At least I, I hope so.